starting for sure. He'll continue working on the live feed as he can. A um, couple of announcements as we begin today. You'll already know this is going to be a, a day of, I should have known, right? I should have known that the live stream wouldn't work today. Um, and uh, so uh, if you look in your bulletin, uh, there are some alterations. Um, we will not be doing confirmation today due to circumstances beyond our control. We just can't do it today. Um, and so there is no insert for confirmation today. I took that out um, and we will uh, hopefully do a confirmation in a few weeks. Um, and so we will get that done. Um, we are still, the kids are ready to sing for you. We are still going to kick off Sunday school. Um, we actually have all three of our graduates from last year in the building, so that's cool. So we will honor our graduates. And, um, and then um, we will fill the time um, with a sermon. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I had to do it, right? Um, and uh, well, well, we'll see how we'll see how it is, because uh, uh, yeah, a couple of things. Um, make sure you're filling out those poinsettia sheets, um, and uh, just so you know, we we got we got one in the mail this week. It was filled out. It was wonderful. It had it, everything. No check in it. So make sure you put your check in. Make sure you pay for it. Um, otherwise, we can't order the poinsettias. Um, but we will do that. The, um, the boxes are back there. They're going. We can, uh, we can get more. Um, the 15th of November will be our deadline. Um, there are also some resources that I put out on the tables, how to pack a box, um, how to follow it um, online if you would like. You can also go to our website, stlukeseitzen.org. That's stlukeseitzen.org. And um, you can uh, follow, uh, you can actually order a box to be built. They will pack it, ship it for you. You just pay a fee and they'll do it, but we'll get credit for it. I don't know what our last numbers were at, but we had set a goal, I think, for 30 online. And I thought I saw we were about halfway there the last time I checked. Take a box. Um, this is an incredible ministry. It reaches kids and adults all over the world. Um, we actually had um, um, people from other churches stop by this week and want more information on how to do it. They heard we were doing it and they said, how do we do that? And now those churches want to do it. Um, and so it's spreading. And uh, so thank you to everybody working on making that happen. Make sure you grab a box. Um, I know some of you have already gone through the thrill of uh, shopping and packing and sending them out. So make sure you do that. Um... I think that's all I got. Oh, there's that harvest supper thing, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Harvest supper this week. Um, it's all, it's all uh, takeouts. It's all uh, drive-through. Um, if, if, if you have not been contacted and you're just feeling really spurned and, and you feel like, I wanted to work hard and I wanted to help out, but nobody asked you, um, committee members that are in the room, raise your hand. There. Get a hold of Deb, get a hold of Heidi, and they would love to put you to work. All right? And they would, they would think that was absolutely wonderful. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Christine and I's tasks will be a little different this year. Um, and uh, so we are looking forward to having it a little different this year. It'll be fun. Um, all right. There are some cards. There is a card out in the lobby, and Dana is waving madly at me. Uh, question, this should probably be directed to Jeff. Is there going to be any kind of a country store set? No, there is no country store. You can direct that to me because I actually know the answer, okay? Uh, there is no country store this year. Um, the decision was made to forego uh, the country store for this year. So um, people will just be driving through, picking up their food, and going home. So um, we want to 
spend our time this morning communicating with each other, as we have been, but we also come here to do far more than that. We want to communicate with the God of the universe, the creator, the sustainer, this morning. Will you join me in our call to worship? As you find it in the bulletin, we read responsively. We are called to be the people of God's kingdom. In God's realm, we will find healing and hope. We are called to be people who love as God has loved us. Lord, Lord, we will reach out with his love to all his people. We are called to be those who serve. Lord, be with us as we serve you by reaching out to those in need. Amen. This morning, we open up our hymn books. I know, it's that blue book in the front of you, okay? We haven't used them for a while, but Gerald got them all clean, all right? They are, they're okay. And we open it up right to the beginning, the very first hymn. We sing to the God of the universe, God Almighty, holy, 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 Kathy, will you lead us as we rise together? Blessed Trinity. 
pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we remember the many ways that you have been with us um, today, this week, in our lives. We ask that you would be with us today in a very special way, that you would help us to listen for your specific words for us today. We ask that you would touch our hearts with your healing mercy. We lift before you, Lord, our prayer of confession. Merciful and gracious God, we gather here today seeking your healing. Our lives are filled with anxiety and fear. Confusion and anger abound in our nation and in our hearts. Forgive us when we have chosen the pathway of fear instead of your way of peace and hope. Bind up our souls and calm our spirits. Teach us again to turn to you in love. Write the commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves on our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, God's love has been poured out on us to heal us, to, uh, to feed and nourish our souls. And we've been forgiven. So now, we are challenged to go in peace and hope to a hurting world. And we give thanks to God for the mercy He has shown us. is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. Before you are seated as God's people, will you go and greet each other this morning? your recording. Y'all know why they got guitars today? 
you, you didn't, you didn't, you know. Oh! You know, the theme of Sunday school this year is wild about Jesus. And you know, rock and rollers, they get pretty wild, right? So we are going to hear from the next group being wild about Jesus. As you can tell, Sunday school is kicking, and we're going to kick it off today. Jen? Good morning. So we're going to finally give the kids their new Bibles, because we have several kids who did that. 
or get them. We're a little low on numbers today, but we do actually have a total of 35 kids in our Sunday school program this year, which is a lot more than we have in the past year. So um, I'm going to read off our names of our kids. They don't have to get up, if, but if do you guys want to come up with your teachers or not? Yeah? Okay. We'll start with the beginners. Christine and Caitlin are teaching the beginners. So we have Aubrey Bowman, Claire Moore, Kendall Adamson, Landon Sauer, Levi Sauer, Duke Miller, Aria Schudemeyer, and Nash Meyer. And let's see, Aria, you get to get a new Bible this year. <laughs> And yeah, and Nash will have one too. Yep. Okay. If you guys want, do you want to go find your parents? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've split the classes up a little bit this year, a little different, just to make our class sizes smaller. So our teachers have been spread out. Some of the rooms are in a little different rooms, but we're making everything work as best we can. So in our kindergarten class. <laughs> is taught by Vivian, <laughs> and none of the kids are here. Um, Brenner Swartzoff, Violet Nelson, Colton Schudemeyer, and Frank Dunn are our kindergartners. And I don't think any of them have them. They okay, our first graders are taught by Colleen, and we have Kenzie Hoshite, Rylan Stockman, Gavin Berichter, Alice Sickle, Aiden and Liam Erickson. And these guys get their new Bibles. You guys get the hands-on Bible this year because you don't, you guys have grown beyond your beginner's Bible, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Find them all. Here's Alice. Whoa. Must be you. Must be you. <laughs> and then we have our second grade class who is taught by Samantha. We have Case Schaller. We have Journey Adamson. Nolan Meyer. And Maddie. Van Ben Cotton, did I say it right? And Maddie needs a Bible too. I didn't have one, but here, we'll put it, I'll put your name in a different one. Because you don't have a Bible yet, do you? Here you go. Our third and fourth graders we did keep together, and Gina is teaching those kids, and we have Hadley Halverson, Ella Erickson, Ellie Whipke, Kaylee Stockman, and Cooler, Cooper Nelson. <laughs> yeah. Our fifth and sixth grade class is taught by Melanie and Dick. We have Ella Berichter, Caleb Hoshite, Tyla Halverson, Adeline Miners, Maya Mori, and Ronan McKee. And starting confirmation this year in our seventh grade class, taught by Deb, we have Lane Schaller. And Lane, you need to come on up and get your adult Bible. <laughs> yeah. There you go, sir. There you go. And then in our eighth grade class um, is taught by Pastor Michael, and we have Christian Stano and Savannah McGann. Oh, Christian's coming down, I think. <laughs> he doesn't need to come. He's up there. <laughs> um, other than that, are you going to install the new people yes. of our board? Yes. Okay. I'm going to do that. Okay. I'll let you do that. All right. We have... Um, we have, it, it, it's an exciting time to be in Christian education. Um, we have um, some new board members, um, which hasn't happened for a little while. And so I want to invite uh, the two board members 
to come and just stand uh, maybe in here and um, so that you can see who they are. Uh, Amanda uh, and Lisa. And they are going to come. And uh, we are, I always, that, that term install makes me nervous because, you know, we install refrigerators. So I, I always think we can uninstall them too, right? But uh, we do want to recognize that these two individuals who have call, been called by God and have answered that call. And uh, so um, I want to address the two of you. So you can kind of look at me, and uh, then we will address each other as a group as well. So the two of you have been called by God, chosen by God's people for the leadership on the Christian Education Board. Um, this is a, a ministry that is both a blessing and a very serious responsibility. Um, and uh, because we really are only one generation away from a godless society that doesn't know about Jesus, that doesn't know about their Bibles, and so it is up to us to be teaching them. And so what we're recognizing here today is your special gifts, your call to work among us and for us. And in love, we thank you for accepting this obligation and this challenge to do your best and to offer your best to the Lord. And we challenge you as God's people to live a life in Christ, to make him known in your witness and your work. Today we install Amanda Meyer and Lisa Rosted, and I ask the two of you, are you a faithful follower of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I do, I, I am. Will you devote yourself to the service of God in this church? If so, say, I will. Will you live and serve in a way that will enable this church to be a people of love and peace? If so, say, I will. Amen. And will you do your power, the best in your power, to be responsible to the task for which you have been chosen? If so, say, I will. Amen. And I would like you to turn and face them, because Church of Jesus Christ, I challenge you. We do rejoice that, the, that the, uh, the field is ripe, the vineyard is ready. I ask you, will you do all you can to assist and encourage these two in the responsibilities to which they have been called, giving them your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers? If so, answer, we will. Let's join together in prayer. Um, and I am going to uh, come over there by you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask that you would pour out your blessings upon these, your servants. We ask that you would grant them grace to give themselves wholeheartedly in your service. We ask that you would keep them uh, before them the example of our Lord, who did not think of himself first, but gave himself for us all. Let them share in the ministry of Jesus and dedication that they had, that he had. Give, guide them in their work. We ask that you would reward their faithfulness with the knowledge that through them, your plan, your purposes are being accomplished. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Um, one other thing, and, and, and this is uh, uh, something that some of you already know, but uh, Lisa has taken on a special role. Uh, we had to get her installed on the board first, right? And uh, she is taking on a special role as the superintendent of the Sunday School program that Jen has been doing for too long. No, she says 10 years? 
we think it might be 10, right? Because, so Jen's been doing it for 10 years, and, and Jen expressed that she loves doing it, she has loved doing it, but wants to move on to some other things, and, and feels that it's time to do that. And, and we didn't know, we were like, oh, what are we going to do? And then all of a sudden, God popped Lisa into the mix. And, 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 and it was like, oh, that's what we're going to do. And, uh, and uh, to be honest with you, I'll just be blunt. Um, you know, when you take this job over, there are, there are not a lot of uh, guidelines. There's not a lot of uh, written down anything. Jen, when she took it over, it was kind of like, here, do it, and then off she went. Um, but uh, Jen has promised to um, uh, guide and lead Lisa and help us in this transition. But um, so from today on, Lisa's going to be in the position that Jen's been in. And it's kind of a weird day, you know? It's kind of weird for Jen, and it's weird for Lisa, and it's weird because Amanda doesn't know why she's still up here. And, uh, um, but, uh, but, because you're on the board now, so, okay. Um, so, um, I would invite you to welcome these two, um, welcome Lisa, uh, into their new roles here at St. Luke's Church. And now you can go. How's that? And I believe that uh, the CE board has a little something that they would like to present to Jen. Uh, Jen, you're going to have to come back up. And I asked her if she wanted to say something, and she said, no, I really don't. <laughs> and uh, Jen, we, we, we are thankful, and we are grateful. And we know that you're not going to disappear, and you will be a part of what we are doing from this day forward. Um, one more thing that we wanted to do this morning, and uh, we didn't get a chance to do it uh, when we normally do, um, is uh, honor the, uh, those that graduated from high school um, this uh, last year. Um, and so I would like to do that at this time. Um, I would invite um, Vanessa, Linnea, and Melanie to join me up here. Um, what did I do with here we go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Come on over this way. Yeah. Okay. So these are our graduates from high school 2019. Seems like no, 2020. And it, 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 it seems like a long time ago in some ways, doesn't it? I mean, it, it's like it, it happened a long time ago. I know that at least one of you has ridden on top of my convertible, so um, that was fun. What I would like to do um, is let each of them, I didn't warn you about this, okay? But it's not that big a deal, okay? <laughs> These are nice people. They actually like you, okay? So they're not going to like boo or anything, okay? But they just would like to know maybe what you're doing since you graduated and um, what, you, what you've been involved in and where you're headed. Sound good? See? They all want to know. And usually when your last name starts with an M, you're in the middle. But with this group, you get to start. So there you go. <laughs> I've been going to school for egg business down in Calmer. Okay. I'm going to school at, oh my gosh, I can't even remember now. <laughs> <laughs> the Salon Professional Academy in Onalaska for cosmetology. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to RCTC for dental hygiene. Okay. Awesome. Um, and and uh, we got a little gift for you. Um, this is a tradition that's been going on for a while. Um, these quilts are made right here um, by individuals in the church. They gather together usually in the basement and, and make these quilts and each of these were made for you. Um, the idea is that wherever you go from now on, you can take a piece of St. Luke's with you and, um, and keep you warm and know that um, we are there on that journey with each of you. So you're, you're eyeing up the colors going, oh, don't give me that one. No, I, <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go like this, all right? And then afterwards, if you guys want to trade, that's like up to you, okay? All right? Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. as I was walking over here that um, I forgot a very important uh, graduate. Um, couldn't be here with us this morning, but uh, Casey Alexander, uh, Brian and Lois's daughter, um, graduated with her RN degree, full four-year RN degree, um, which is quite an accomplishment, and, um, and uh, we do want to remember her. Uh, mom's here. So we're going to give Casey a round of applause. We're going to give mom a round of applause, and then she can give it to Casey. How's that? And, uh, it really is a job well done, and uh, we want to make sure that we acknowledge that as well. Um, I'm looking up at the clock, and uh, I'm thinking about time because we don't have much. Look at that. I, 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 in my imagination today, thought I might get you out of here early. <clears throat> Silly me. Have you ever thought about what we do with time? We, uh, we, uh, we make time, we take time for those things that are important to us. We save time. We... Uh, um, we try and use technology of all kind, which is supposed to save us time and today didn't let us do anything right. Um, we mark time, we kill time, we race against time. And one person has said the saddest thing of all that we do with time is we waste it. And today, in the text for today, we read these words from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. You can find it in the Red Pew Bible on page 1819. Um, it's not in the bulletin because I didn't know I was going to preach this sermon. So, um, Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 15. 
We read these words, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. When we read these words here in Ephesians, when we read them in English, we might think to ourselves, well, uh, Paul's telling us that we need to not waste time. And that's kind of true, but there's more to it. The, uh, the, the word translated into English from the Greek is um, ex, exagorzo. Oh, it's been a few years since I had Greek class. Um, uh, which means to redeem. In this case, redeem the time. It's the same word that Paul used in Galatians when he said Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law to become a curse for us. That word redeemed. It means to purchase, to buy, to pay for, make a payment for. And Paul is telling us here in Ephesians that our time is so crucial, so critical, so important, so that we need to treat it as a valuable possession, a valuable commodity. And we must not squander or waste it. He says we need to redeem our time, make the most of. Why? What's so critical about time that, that it must be redeemed? Well, most of you would probably say, well, because we don't have much of it. You know, it, sooner or later we're all going to die. Sooner or later all of our time will end. But that's not what Paul says. Paul says an amazing thing. Look at it again, um, verse uh, 16. Uh, Make the most of every opportunity, that's the word redeemed, because we don't have much time. It's not what he says. He says, because the days are evil. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Paul says, redeem the time because the days are evil. I thought about, think about it this way. You know what a bucket list is? A bucket list is something you want to do before you kick the bucket, right? So, um, so some of us might want to go to Scotland. Or we might want to uh, get a hole in one someday or swim with dolphins, or, or take one of those fly-in fishing trips, or jump out of an airplane. There's all kinds of things you can put on your bucket list. There's nothing wrong with any of those, except maybe jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying. There's nothing wrong with any of them. They're just lists. They're, 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 they're wish lists. And God's okay with that. God's okay with us having a wish list. But he warns us not to be foolish about our list because, and not to leave off something. Not to leave off one thing on that list that has to be there. Look at verse 17. He says, Therefore, because I've told you to redeem the time and the days are evil, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Everything on your bucket list, at least for most of us, is something we want to do that's fun, something that's, uh, that, we, that we really want to, that we want. This, God says, needs to be on every one of our bucket lists and it's important. It's serious. Understand what the Lord's will is. Friends, there's no doubt that we live in evil times. The choices that we each have to make in these evil times will have eternal consequences. We live in a world full of evil. All you have to do is watch the news, spend a little time on any social media platform, 
and you're going to know right away that something is not right. It's an evil world. And God has saved you and he's saved me to do something about this evil world. And the something he saved us to do that needs to be on all of our bucket lists is for us to shine our light into this dark, evil world. If you got your Bible open there, jump back a few verses. Verse 8 in chapter 5. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Live as children of light. Jump down to verse 10. Find out what pleases the Lord. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You and I are called to reflect the light of Jesus Christ into a dark, evil world. And the only way we're ever going to do that, the only way we're going to pull that off, the only way we can even come close to doing that is to understand what the will of God is. So how do we do that? How do we learn God's will? Well, some of you that have been around me now for seven years are going to go, oh, here he goes. Read your Bible, memorize verses, meditate on the Word of God day and night. He does this all the time. And you know something? You're right, I do it all the time. I do it all the time because we need to do it. And God expects that of us. But if that's all we do, If that's all we do, then we run the risk of being like the Pharisees in the, in the New Testament. They knew their scriptures forward and backwards. They knew their scriptures better than anybody else. But Jesus was clear about the fact that they were missing something in their lives. So in place of asking people to memorize and meditate on scripture, Paul does an amazing thing. Take a look. Verse 18, he says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Debauchery, fancy word for living a life like the evil world around us. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Friends, in order for us to fully understand God's will. We must be totally controlled by God's Spirit. And Paul makes what on the surface looks like a really odd statement and an odd comparison. It, it, it sounds out of place. He hasn't been talking about wine. He hasn't been talking about getting drunk. He hasn't been talking... Uh, here it is. And it seems weird. And you're like, Paul, why'd you throw that in there? Until you understand what he's trying to say. Let me help you out. You ever seen somebody who's drunk? I got one person. Dana's the only one who's ever seen a drunk person. Come on! Anybody you seen a drunk person? Some of you just look in the mirror, right? <laughs> How do you know somebody's drunk, though, if you've never seen them actually drink something? By the way they act. By the way they walk. By the way they talk. By the way they think. By their behavior. Drunkenness is seen in people's behavior. They get filled with alcohol, and that alcohol then controls them. And Paul says, don't be filled with the spirit of alcohol. Be filled with the spirit of God, and it needs to fill you in the same way that alcohol does. 
It needs to fill you to the point that it affects the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you think, and the way you act. This is crucial for us as Christians. We need to be so filled with the Spirit of God that people know it when they see it in our behavior. So that begs the question, how do we get filled with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit? Oh, look, time is gone. How do we get filled with the Holy Spirit? Friends, will you trust me with something this morning? I got a whole half a page here, okay? Will you trust me if I tell you that if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you've asked for forgiveness of your sins, you've been baptized, and you are following Jesus in your life, then you have the Holy Spirit in you, and there's nothing else you've got to do? I, I got a whole bunch of verses here. I can take you through them. But right now, I just need you to trust me. Because you know what? If you have done that, then you have the Holy Spirit in you. But Paul here in Ephesians seems to th say, you know what? We need to kind of have a refilling, if you will. We need to get that spirit that's already in us to rise up within us. And how do we do that? And this is where Paul just says something crazy and when I point it out to you, you're going to go he's off the deep edge. Are you ready? Look. Look at verse, nine, uh, well back up the end of verse 18. Instead be filled with the Spirit. Look at 19. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. The Apostle Paul says in order to be filled with God's Spirit, we need to sing. By the way, that's one reason that we sing here in this church, even with this pandemic thing going on, because it's something that God tells us to do. Music. Music has the power to control us. The multi-billion dollar music industry knows this very well. When you're watching a movie, what's one of the cues that something's coming? Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. What's coming? A big shark! You got it! See? Music! What's coming? Star Wars! There you go! See? Music has that kind of power. And the Bible tells us that music has even more power than the music industry is aware of. The Bible tells us that music actually has a power over the spirit world. One of the greatest singers, if you will, of the Bible was a shepherd boy named David. Uh, da uh, the, the book of Psalms, 150 Psalms, David wrote over half of them. He was well known as a singer and a player of a harps long before he ever was confronting Goliath. King Saul, who um, had some difficulties, had walked away from God and was going his own way and, 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 and was tormented by evil spirits. And, and he would call in David and it says David would sing and play his harp for him and the evil spirit would leave. Music, glorifying God, has a power and a strength over the evils of this world. It has power to bring peace to our hearts and our souls. So when you're, when you're depressed, when you're down, when you're struggling, you know what? Find a song that glorifies God and sing it. And now you're sitting there going, oh man, come on, Michael. I'm serious. 
I am serious. It doesn't matter if you're a good singer or not. It doesn't matter if you have a good voice. What matters is that you are glorifying God and you're singing out to Him. You might as well do it now because you're going to do it for all eternity. And you're going to sing out praises to God. We need to, and, and, and here's the deal. We, need, we use the power that God has put in music to lift our souls and to bring us out of being down and sad. I got one more thing I want to show you. Hang with me. Because Paul says we got to sing. But there's one more thing he tells us to do. Look quickly at verse 20. He says, Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How often should we give thanks? What should we give thanks for? Everything. And yet people find it really difficult to do this. Uh, next Sunday I'll have the wall of thanks up. The kids, the Sunday school kids, will put little stickers up there what they're thankful for. Uh, how can I tell? Because there's nothing above this high on the board. Right now, if I told you to take a piece of paper out and write down 10 things you're thankful for and 10 things that you're really upset about, mad about, and aggravated about, which, which, which list would fill up faster? Why? For most people, it would be that, other li that aggravated list, wouldn't it? And we'd sit here and go, I can't think of 10 things I'm thankful for. Huh? Everybody go like this. Come on. You thankful you got two hands? Are you? I think everybody in here has got two feet. You thankful you got two feet? Two eyes, two ears? We got so much to be thankful for, and we just ignore it. We don't give thanks for it. Are you thankful that you're upright and breathing air? People tend to focus on what they don't have. And we forget to focus on what we already have. We tend to dwell on things we want. We want a better, we want a better, we want a better job, a better car, a better house, a better spouse. Better, 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 better. And that's, what, that's one of the reasons we get down. That's one of the reasons, because we're always looking for that something better. But we don't have. Look, I have right here an iPhone 11. All right? When I got this phone, it was the hottest, greatest, most wonderful phone on the planet. It does everything that I ever want to do on a phone. I love this phone. There's a new one out. Now why would I need the new one? I don't. But there's something inside of me that goes, oh, I want an iPhone 12, you know. Right? That's how we are. We aren't even thankful for the things we already have. Let alone what's out there. I got a promise. I got a promise for you this morning from God. Learn to be grateful for what you have. Quit focusing on what you don't have. So I should be grateful I got a sound system that feedbacks, right? Quit focusing on what you don't have. Learn to be grateful for what you do have and you will be so filled with the Holy Spirit of God that it will change how you think and it will change how you behave and the world around you will begin to notice. It's a promise. I promise from God. Years ago, I loaded UPS trucks out of the Minneapolis hub. Brown direct line. 
The Brown Direct Line was the line that everything that came into the Minneapolis hub that was going to Des Moines, Iowa, and then everything and then would be distributed out of Des Moines into the rest of Iowa came through my truck. During the holiday season, um, I would load two and a half 40 foot trailers ceiling to floor in a four hour shift with all your little boxes. And I placed every one of them very carefully, I promise. <laughs> Don't put fragile on a box if you're shipping at UPS. We take that as a personal challenge, okay? <laughs> it was brutal, body bruising work. Every night you went home with a new injury. I have a knee that someday will have to be worked on because I loaded trucks for, uh, for big, the big brown truck, the uh, UPS. And all around me, every, every shift, um, you, you'd have trucks lined up and conveyor belts going down to your trucks and, 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 and guys would be in their trucks and they'd be yelling and they'd be screaming and they'd be swearing and they'd be calling out for help and it was just, it was a madhouse. And your pastor, who you know is weird, would sing hymns, spirituals, worship and praise songs, songs that I had written. One particularly bad night, my supervisor caught me on break and he said, what is wrong with you? He said, you never yell, you never scream, you never swear like all the other guys. You're in your truck singing, what's your deal? Friends, as we sing and we praise God, as we give thanks for what we already have, people around us, it'll begin to affect our behavior and people around us will notice. There's something else that Paul mentions, but we're going to talk about that next week. I want to close with this. Time is up. Way up. A big question out there is why is this important? Why should we even worry about being filled with the Holy Spirit? Why? Why? We've been talking a little bit about how. Singing, giving thanks. But, you know what? Why should we even try? Here, listen carefully. The Bible tells us the Holy Spirit is an amazing power. The most powerful thing on the universe. The Holy Spirit teaches us, comforts us, helps us in our prayers when we don't know what to pray. And Scripture tells us that the same power living in us, already in us, is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Did you hear that? The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in every one of us. If we are a follower of Jesus Christ, if we have accepted Jesus Christ, asked for forgiveness, been baptized, we have that same power that raised Jesus from the dead living in each one of us. And to be filled with the Spirit, as Paul is talking about here in Ephesians, is to grab hold of the power that's already in us. So I have an assignment. Here's your assignment. You take a piece of paper. And I'm going to ask you to write down some songs that you can sing. Write them down. If you need to look up the words, write in. You know what? You can, you can go on any internet search engine that you have, type in lyrics to, type in the, uh, the song, and boom, the lyrics will be there. Print them out. Write them down. Find the words if you have to. If you need help, Jesus loves me. This, there you go. Amazing grace. What a friend we have in Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. How about the holy, holy, holy. I mean, come on. 
There is no end. Write them down. Have a list. So that when you, and, and I want to challenge some of you, on your drive to work, turn off the radio and sing. Maybe that's why people wear masks in their cars. They don't want you to see them singing, but sing. I guarantee you, your day will be different if you sing about God on your way to your job. Guarantee it. One second, second piece to your assignment. Take another piece of paper. So you got one piece of paper with some songs on it that you can sing when you're down, when you're okay. The second piece of paper, write down 10 things you're thankful for. 10 things. I've given you five already this morning, right? So you really only have to come up with five. I've given you hands, feet, eyes, ears, right? Okay, that's four, whatever. Write down 10 things you're thankful for. When we learn to sing songs about God's glory, when we learn to be grateful and filled with thanks, then God's Spirit already alive within us, already there, will rise up, fill us up, and work power in our lives. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, We come before you and we, we need your help. Oh, for some of us, it's hard to even imagine that your spirit it lives in us. And then for some of us, we just don't feel it. We don't, we don't know, we just, we just can't even tell it's there. So Father, we ask that you would help us know your spirit today. Help us to sing. Help us to be thankful. Lord, we gather together as your people. And we join our hearts with your people from all places, through across all times. And we lift before your throne of grace the prayer you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver me as me. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I apologize for running over. I apologize to those that are having to watch this recorded instead of live. But God has a reason for all that. I just don't know what it is. Hymn number 495. I think we'll just do the first and last verse, Kathy, if that's okay. And uh, uh, but, but look at the chorus. I have no other argument. I, have, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died. And Daddy died for me. Do you think that if you, if you sang that chorus on your way to work, do you think your day would be a little different? I don't need anything else. It's enough that Jesus died for me. Let's rise together and sing this together. My faith has found a resting place Not in device nor creed I trust the ever-living one, his wounds for me shall plead. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough 
that Jesus died and that he died for me. My great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed, for me his life he gave. I need no other argument, I need no other Enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. And Christian, why don't you leave that recording going until um, I, I can get up there, okay? All right. And now, now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen.